Hope you had a wonderful week and wonderful as in just remembered, a God-centered, uh, reminded of who God is and all that God and all of all of who God is to you. Let me put my water on. And all of who God is to you. You know, um, this has been some some great times, some great series that we be going through. And, and, and all that you're getting. It is to prepare you. It's always to prepare you. That's why I say this is can't just be talk. It can, we can't just be people who love talk. And then after we walk away from listening, we we either don't have tools or we have tools of confusion. And so, you know, and those kind of tools, I, I used to say it this way, a, a plastic sword is not going to help you in a real, a real duel, you know. And so we 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 have to care and 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 want these things for ourselves. So I do pray that every heart that is listening, that your desire is to finish this race. Um, and the one of the things that I I I I want you to get in your mind in the way that you think and we think is that technically this is not a race; it's a course. And even though we've been using the words race, but the 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 the, the meaning and the interpretation of that word is that it's about being on being on course. And, and and I say that because sometimes when we use the word race and we and we take those um examples and parables from the Bible that are meant to, to help you see a point, not for you to make the example a real thing but that you would see within this story, you would get a picture of the point that's being, the points that are being made. So it's not a race, it's a course. And I say it's not a race, it's a course so that you won't get your, find yourself in some kind of competition. I've been doing this thing a long time. And um, sometimes church leadership feels, begin to feel like a, a race and not a course. Because there's competition, there's who goes here, who, you know, it's just it's just a lot of something. And so I pray that you remember that this is a course, not a race. So we're doing right now, get on your mark part one. And there is a mark. There is a race marked out for us. But for every one of us, we have to come into that race. And God's desire is that we come into that race um, centered. I would say it this way uh, 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 as your authentic self, organic self, but as the person that's being shepherded by the spirit versus, you know, in, 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 in our beginning years, um, as you, as we grow into this thing, we're not necessarily shepherded by the spirit. You know, sometimes the spirit is leading us. Sometimes the old nature uh, uh, was leading us and, and, and we, and we grew up and we mature perfectly imperfect folks maturing growing each other's growing in each other's spaces and learning as we go you know and so you get to a place in your life <laughs> sort of like where i am now you look back at what some of these youngers are doing and you find yourself saying you you ain't lived long enough yet and the reason why you don't toss you know just just go all the way off because you remember who you were you know when i'm talking to my daughter you know, she's uh, younger than me, of course, you would know that, but she's in her 40s. And um, when we're talking, and I'm talking from this place right here, I find myself saying, I don't even make it my point. The spirit will lead you to it. If you if you keep surrendering, the spirit will speak to you right, right in the middle of whatever you're talking about. And I find myself saying, at some point, going towards the end. You know what, when you, when when I was your age, I wasn't doing this right here. I didn't know to think like this right here. And when I was in my 40s, um, I was tripping over very similar rocks that you were tripping over, or I was stumbling in very similar areas. So why is that important for me to say to you? Because you know, when, when, when you know that and you're able to be in that kind of authentic, in that kind of space where even while you're hearing and God is downloading and you're having to reveal and, and things are being revealed right while you're talking, you're learning as you're going 
and you're trusting that the words that are going to come out of your mouth are going to be acceptable in God's sight. Why? Because you have done your best to center yourself. You have done your best to be uh, God balanced. And part of God's balance is remembering where you come from. This is how you will know and be able to speak to someone as if all things are possible, even in their situation. Because you know, when you was there, you, you thought that was the right place to be too. And I'm not saying this to say that my daughter's doing anything out of the ordinary. I'm just saying that she's younger than I am and I've learned things even down to parenting. I learned not to make a big deal out of things with, with her daughter that I made a big deal out of with her. Because when you live, you should learn. You shouldn't just be out here trying to live. You should live and learn. That way you will truly and really live versus just turning up. Mm -hmm. So this one is get on your mark. Give me a second. Mm -hmm. Get on your mark. Part one. Not a race. It's a course. Let's go to slide one. We deal from slide one, which is Isaiah 35, one through five, I believe. Um, this, is, this is what we dealt with last week. Let's read it together. The wilderness and the dry land will be glad. This is, this is Isaiah prophesying to exiles, to people who was just in a place. And, and he gave them this picture in this perspective, even though they were in still in some kind of situation, he helped, he gave them uh, 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 God's perspective. Uh, 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 redemption words, restoration words, but those kind of words and that kind of picture, because that is what that is gold, God's goal, and Isaiah knew it, and he he went to tell us to people. So let's read it. The word, the wilderness and the dry land will be glad. The desert will shout in exultation and blossom, like the autumn crocus. It will blossom abundantly and rejoice with joy in singing. The glory of Lebanon will be given to it, the majesty of Mount Carmel and the plain of Sharon. They will see the glory of the Lord, the majesty and splendor of our God. Encourage the exhausted and make staggering needs firm. Say to those with an anxious and panic-stricken heart, be strong, fear not. Indeed, your God will come with vengeance for the ungodly. The retribution of God will come, but he will save you. Then, then, the eyes of the blind will be opened and the ears of the deaf will be unstopped. See, when you get unstopped this way, you will be unstoppable. Mm -hmm. But here is the condition. Here is the condition. And, and sometimes, you know, we're not exhausted every day. You know, sometimes it's in seasons and sometimes we have really good seasons. Um, but it says to encourage the exhausted and make the staggering needs firm. Say, this you're going to say to those with an anxious and panic-stricken heart, be strong, fear not. You know, I, I say this to you because sometimes... People with a pat, anxious and with a padded stricken heart, you don't always see that. But if you listen, you'll hear, you'll hear words of instability or unbelief or helplessness, hopelessness. And you'll, 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 you'll hear those things. And sometimes people, you know, can talk really strongly and can can give off great vibes and you don't know where and, and you could be clueless that's why this scripture this this understanding is for everybody because listen the wilderness and dry land will be glad there is a wilderness and a dry land every one of us go through dry spells at some point in everything you do whether it be on your job whether it be parenting you know you rolling okay kids kids are a certain age you roll it, they do everything you say do, and then next thing you know, they don't want to hear nothing you have to say. Hey, that's a dry, that's a that's a dry spot right there. 
and it feels like a wilderness. And whether people say it out loud or not, that 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 that, that spiritual exhaustion, that that exhausted spirit, that 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 thing that happens when you once had control and now you don't. You once had control in the sense of if you did certain certain things, you could turn it around. But when you're dealing with kids, that 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 leaves. And I'm not saying with every kid, but a lot of them. And so that's not just with kids. This is life. This is life. You know, today, you know, I, I learned that Twitch. Twitch, Twitch was a dancer. Um, he ended up on the Ellen DeGeneres show for years. But when he started, he started on, well, when I first saw him, it was on So You Think You Could Dance, right? 40 years old. And I found out today, while I was just doing stuff, searching, getting myself ready for this lesson some more, that he committed suicide. That's, that hurt my heart. It hurt my heart because he 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 was such a bright light. I mean, really, really, you know. Um, see, sometimes we think that be, because people aren't poor, they're not broke somewhere, you know. And because they're smiling, that nothing's happening. Now, what, what, what do I thank God for his family, his wife, that he did? He, he put a smile on our faces. He was one of the ones who, so you think you could dance. It used to be, when it first came out, there was a lot of formal dancing in the sense of ballet and tap, well, not so much tap, but ballet, modern, those kind of things. So people who were trained a certain way. And then when he came on, you know, I was like, oh, he's bold. And what I meant by bold is at that particular time, that's just not what you saw up against train dancing. And he didn't win the first season or, or the first season, I believe he came on, but then he came back and I think he was the runner up. I thought he won. I think I just found out today, oh, he was the runner up. But I was so proud of him. I was so proud of him that he found a way to get something across, a street dance style. Something across that had not hit the mainstream a certain way. Again, especially if you were competing against these trained dancers. And then after that, I remember when that went off and I didn't see him anymore. And then he came on, I think he came on as a, as a, 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 a some kind of judge, but I just kept seeing this man reinvent himself. And I just remember how proud I was of him. And then, you know, 2017 or 18, I saw that he was DJing on the Ellen DeGeneres show. And I said, I tell you that, if you want to know how to do it, watch him. Watch, watch someone who just uses all of their tools. So to find out today that that beacon of light became overwhelmed. somehow overwhelmed. And it just reminded me because sometimes people think, and we're seeing more lately that, you know, it ain't just poor people who are troubled inside for some reason. I don't know the reason. But I, but I did see this person grow in front of me with me, but definitely in front of me, because if he's 40, I'm nearly 20 years older than him. So that means he was young. And to get to that point and to defy the odds, 
and then come to a point where it's something, something, something inside. It was just too much. And I say that to you all for this reason. Do not take for granted that life doesn't happen to folks who are brightening up your space. Do not let us let 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 us take what happens and what's happening in this world seriously. Because we just don't know when it'll come knocking on our door. And what my hope is today, from this day forward and before, and continue from this day forward, that I can somehow give you the tools to make it through. Those moments when it gets real tough. When it gets real tough. Because the best of them, the best of them feel pressure. The best of them find themselves in, 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 a, in, a, in a type of chaos that is too much. So don't take these teachings lightly. Not just for you, but for your family member, for your children, because you never know who you who you may have to um, talk to when they're in one of those in, in a really tough and tight space. So I thank God for His life. I do, I do. Um, and the. Uh, the inspiration uh, that I experienced during that time of seeing somebody come out there and, and, and not holding back anything. That's why we're talking about, now listen, I was already on this page, but it, 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 it made sense. Listen, get on your mark. Get on your mark, get on your course. Get on your course. What did we just read in Isaiah slide one? That was slide one. Don't put it back up. It says, say to the anxious and panic-stricken heart, be strong, fear not. I pray that you hear that in every part of your soul. And then at the end, he says, then the, that 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 uh, God will save you and he will, uh, and then the, blind, the, the eyes of the blind will be open and the ears of the deaf will be unstopped. And that the dry land will be glad. So if there's anybody out there right now, you feel like you're at the end of your rope. Hold on. Hold on. If you need some friends, we got a cell group. We got small groups, gender-based. The, 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 the men show up on um, uh, uh, Tuesdays. Go on to the soulfactory.com so you can see that sometimes you need a certain kind of friend in your life, a certain kind of person in your life who you can just be be really, really free with. Uh, we have sold, sold, as O U L D, sold out singles. Why? Empowerment for singles. A community of like minded believers. And I'm not talking about religious, uh, uh, churchy religious, the way people do certain things. No. Real life stories of people, because sometimes you 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 think you think you've been ridiculous all by yourself, and then you got small groups of women. Go to the soulfactory.com. You can see that, find that. Do not put it past sleeping one night and waking up, and it's just too much. Don't go to sleep with it. Reach out to somebody. And most of all, uh, 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 last but not least, there's a prayer line. Every day. Every day. Go on to soulfactory.com. Get on that prayer line. Faith come by here and stay in the space. Stay in the space where folks understand life, reality, um, 
and that being being phony and showy don't work for you when 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 you feel that pressure and you feel like you're about to crash you don't have to you don't have to be a member if you want to be a member you can go to the soul factory you can do that too and you can find that how to, how to join this community too but go on to the prayer line you don't want to use your real name real information i don't care we don't care because there is a mark a race a course set out for us set out for us so that god can use us as individuals unique individuals to make a difference in this world right to raise the consciousness of this world the awareness of the people around you and that is done best when you yourself is when you are better healthy and centered that's when we are best used so my prayer is that you get on your mark today what what i mean by getting on your mark so that there, if there's anybody out there right now listening to this and said i am i am i'm at my last you can even go and type your prayer request into the prayer team sometimes you know what a counselor tell you to do just go write it out just get it out get it out of your head if that means you can't call nobody and 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 and, and it ain't a uh hotline a 24-hour hotline you can get out your head by typing it in there and guess what they'll pray for you they'll go back and read every one of those things and they will pray for you from spirit to spirit they will pray for you use all these tools especially in this world that we're in right now because it's a little tough and it's a little tight for the best stuff okay let's go to slide two this one is called get on your mark Read it with me. Let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. Let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. What's your mark? Get, take that down. We have done many things over the years for the purpose of helping you to get on your mark. But what we're also talking about, and what it also said, there is a race marked out for us. And this race that's marked out for us is an inside out race. And unfortunately, unfortunately, it has become an outside race. Being, being a part of a membership has become about networking, not necessary community. Sometimes, um, you know, uh, uh, not like I said, not always community, but it's networking. I've, I've, I, how do I know? Because I had, I've had people come to me, and I just found a respectful way to stay on my mark. Somebody may have you out there because at the end of the day, listen to this: uh, when we are anxious and panic stricken, exhausted. And our knees are staggering. We look for comfort. We look for ways of escape. And it and and some of those ways of escape, some of those uh, what we say, um, those things that are offered to us in the wilderness. They don't, ain't nobody offering you uh, junk. Mm -mm. Jesus didn't get, you know, Jesus didn't get offered junk. He offered kingdoms. Let me give you, you know, I can give you these kingdoms. You know, and at this day and age, uh, you listen close enough, everywhere you go, that's God offering you kingdoms. That that spirit is seen as God offer you kingdom because at this point, at this point, um, oftentimes our goal. Uh, is abundant life from the outside in instead of the inside out. So Hebrews 12, 1 said this, 
throw off everything that hinders. So guess what? I gotta be so in tune with myself. I have to know what hinders. I have, I have to recognize what hinders. And it says in the sin, whatever that thing is, what is sin? Um, anything we do outside of faith, that's sin, according to the word. Um, then I have to throw off the, the sin, that, that, that thing, that something that so easily entangles so that I can run with perseverance. The race marked, we can run the race marked out for us. So it didn't say so I can run simply with with, with patience only. But, but you know, because some people, patience means I'm sitting down waiting on God. No, perseverance means I'm walking through the valley of death. I'm moving towards where I need to move from. But, but per perseverance means endurance. And that means, Jill, you, this, this, this eternal thing, this is a long game. And you have to see God's presence, God's reveal, God's movement, God hear God's voice right now, every day in a long game, in, in an eternal game. And you got to hear God, what's happening right now? Because I, I really want to uh, run this race with perseverance, this course, but I but I also want to know what's next. You know, you know, when folks ask Jesus, can I sit on your left or my right? You know what Jesus said? Oh, that's not from that's not for me to give. So the best of them have to know. I I no, no, no. I, I have to know my place in this course. That's why I said to us, share with you a couple of weeks ago, hey, just don't be the judge one way or the other. You know, if you think you have the power to set somebody free a certain way on that level that God functions on, that is final. One way or the other, stay out of that space. Even Jesus didn't go in that space. When is the time of the day? It ain't for me to say. It ain't for me to know. That's what the Father knows. Um, can I sit? Can we sit here there? No, nope. I can't. I don't get to, I don't. I got my sign seat. Jesus, I'm sitting my assigned seat, but as far as where your signs, assigned seat is, it's not for me to say. See, I believe if we stay out of that, that space, those kind of spaces, we, we would have, we would breathe fresher air. Because when you try to know what you can't know, you start forcing answers. You start forcing things. Versus being open to everything and attached to nothing. So getting on my mark means I, I need to understand what is my space and what isn't my space. Jesus knew this is not for me. I'm you can ask me that question, but no, nah, that's that's not that's not for me to it's not for me to get into that. And I pray that we become that trusting and that mature. And that that surrendered to the Father, where we 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 where we know ourselves well enough to recognize when we are, when we're off centered, right? To recognize what's hindering us. You know, sometimes, like I said, uh, 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 we think we have answers for everybody and everything, and it's not true. Wasn't true for Jesus, it's not true for us. Let's go to slide three. My centered self is what I call it. Here's the, the question here. Do you know what it means to be centered? Do you know what it feels like when you are out of sorts, out of touch with yourself? Do you know how to find your center? And do your thoughts you at extremes? Take that down. Last week, we talked about Jesus praying three times about the same thing. And we, 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 we fleshed it out to see, okay, what really, where was Jesus? Jesus was in, was in a place where he was, um, his desire, because he, he spoke his desire. He spoke his desire and he spoke his greater de desire. And that is, can you remove this cup? Not my will, but yours. 
but he still asked. And what I like to say is going back one, two or three times is what if, if, if listen, if you walk in this thing, you know that this is true. Um, sometimes, as he said to his disciples, oh, the flesh is the, the, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. And for what I know is in front of me, what I have to do, I have to have my flesh in check. I cannot be triggered. Come on now. Let's make this thing real. If you've ever been in a place where, 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 where uh, 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 you was about to do something important, you needed to be centered. You needed to be in a place where you, you, were, you have exhausted or dealt with your triggers. Because we know that when, when we get triggered and the trigger is on top of, on, on, uh, 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 is on top, is leading us versus under our feet, so to speak, we clap back. People clap back on job interviews. People, listen, if, if you don't do follow in Jesus' footsteps to say, listen, am I still feeling something? Is there some sin, some part of my, my uh, uh, old nature or his earthly nature? Is, this, is, it, is it alive right now? Did I arrest it? Have, have, have I subdued this thing enough so that when I have to go and do and be obedient unto death, I won't be clapping back? Because I'm human. And I'm overwhelmed, as Jesus would say. And I'm full of sorrow. And I have choices. I, I don't have to do this, as he told Pilate. He said, Pilate said, you know, uh, I can punch his Pilate said, you know, I have the power to free you or put you on the cross. She said, no. Mm -mm. Um, the only thought you have is what was given. Let me tell you something. See, you got to be ready for the, the Pilate spirits who come and try to tell you that they had some power over you. Why are you why are you under all this pressure? And they pushing buttons. Jesus, you know, you know us. Hey, you you don't even want me to let you know. Oh, they don't want to know about me. Jesus, I can't do that. He just said, no. He said, the only only thought, the only three you're gonna be able to do this because it's all a part of the mark that I had to get on. All a part of that. So no. See, can you imagine you're in a situation, everybody's betraying you, you know, folks are betraying you, you know you ain't done nothing wrong. So much so that Pilate said after Jesus did not clap back a certain way. You know, uh, 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 frustration, he just spoke true. But uh, not, not from arrogance. Listen. Listen, he was so all right that even Pilate said, I got to let this man go. This is after Pilate came in there all swole like he was the man. Jesus just let him know, nah. See, when you when you somewhere, you stop arguing with people. Really, when you believe something about who God is and who you are to God from, not from your arrogance, but from your, your surrender part, it's, it's like, hey, you know. I done had some, you know, people can accuse you and say stuff it's like, no, nah, that's not what I meant. So how can we but what 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 do you not understand or or how can we make some sense out of this versus taking all that stuff first? Because when it was over, I was like, look, I gotta let this man go. He tried. Even his wife came and said, listen now, y'all, you can go. You better leave that one alone. But my point to you is this: Jesus had to be ready, emotionally ready. Emotionally ready to walk in that kind of obedience. And that's why when it says encourage the exhausted and make staggering knees firm and say to those with an anxious and panic-stricken heart, be strong and fear not. But he but he kept on going and said, you know, God will do it. God will come. He'll say, stay on your course. Um, then the eyes of the blind, your eyes will be open. 
And you is you and the deaf ears will be able to stop. And you you know what to pay attention to, you know what to listen to, you know what to not listen to. You recognize God's voice over another voice as you uh go through this thing, sometimes in trial and error. This this is this is this is a course. This is the course. And the goal is if you get on course, get back on course. But here's the trick. Oftentimes we get on course because we let people appeal to this the, the stuff in this world that we want. We let people appeal to us. And since we see the majority doing, doing these things and talking about God and money, this and all the, you know, just all of that stuff. We say, hey, well, listen, if they doing it, why not me? If they can go over the, you know, if this is what people are doing, then this is what people are doing. No, get on your mark. There's a race, a course marked out for us. And that's what we've been talking about. And that's what we will continue to talk about. And we have to determine, you have to determine, all of us have to determine, God, we stand on your course. What is one clear thing about God's course? It is an inside out walk. It is transformed from the inside out. And we know that because the Holy Spirit will come in and do a baptism inside, a cleansing, a, a circumcised heart, a renewed mind as inside stuff. So factory and anybody's listening, don't you ever forget that that's a root. That's a root. And when you start hearing all this other stuff, go back to the root. Am I in the wilderness right now being tempted by kingdoms? Life, physical life, life on earth, a wonderful, abundant, earthly life. And my private life is a mess. My inner self is a mess. Go back to your room. Or you will look like a fish out of water because you will be connected, disconnected from your source, which is the spirit. God is the father of your spirit. Your biological parents are your biological parents. Those are the ones that are the parents of this other part of us, that other nature. God is the father of our spirit. And when we disconnect from our source, our lives look like anxious and panic stricken. Have you ever seen a fish out of water? You see how a fish out of water is struggling. See how they're moving all around? But when you put them in that water, guess what they do? They reconnect with their source and they swim in a rhythm. Ain't, 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 ain't all that flapping around in the water. You ever took some flowers out of the ground? How long did the flowers in the vase last when you took them out of the ground and away from their source, which is the dirt? They'll be beautiful on your table, but they don't last as long on your table as they did outside of your garden. You know that's true. So when we disconnect from our source, our life looks like, feels like hell and looks like a flapping around, uh, anxious and panic stricken, sunk, a, a exhausted and staggering knee something. Because somewhere along the line, we have disconnected from our source. And that source is love. That source is God. And that source of God is us receiving his, his, his way of keeping us connected. That's what love does. It's called, a, it's a love connection. I got a light on right now. That's on me. That light is it's still a light. But if I unplug it from the wall, it's going to go off. I don't have to hit the off button. It will still be the on button. The on button will still be put to on. But if I pull it, if I take it from its power source, it will no longer shine. It will no longer light up the room. It will no longer help the blind eye see and open the ears of the deaf. So our goal is that you stay connected to your source. 
and the rules of this race is inside out. It says, listen, change the cup on the inside and the outside will, will begin to line up. May not do it immediately, but the outside will follow suit when you can change the inside. When God wanted to, to, to get the darkness out of this world, the darkness that was controlling too, too, too many of too much of his creation. Rules didn't do it. Love did. Love did. God understood it. This, this, this is how I am going to free them. I am going to give my life. I am going to give up something to them that is valuable to me. And I would rather win them by embrace than whoopings. Now, if they need a little help in the other area of discipline and, and, and consequence, I will even do that from the spirit of love because what's the truth? I will do that in order to turn them back to me, but never to drive them away. Now, so God gave us an inside out change because as long as those things with those those commandments was written on a uh, 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 stone tablets, didn't get us where we needed to be. So God said, I'm gonna write that on your heart. That's the race you made. That God is pinning on your heart, writing on your heart, bringing you back to a wonderful love connection. Why is that? Because when you were disconnected, you look like you're exhausted. And you look and you are staggering. And your light is unplugged, even though the button is on. And you ain't shining from the inside out. From the inside like I want you to. And my goal is to save the life that is truly life. Say, why would a man win the whole world and fulfill his own soul? Gain the world and but, but fulfill his soul. Why, 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 why would I care about all of these things? But my soul is bankrupt. Just something to think about. Let's go to slide four. Finding my center. In order to get on your mark, we want to find a center. Here we go. This is the message Bible. He says this, I've seen it all in my brief and pointless life. Here, a good person cut down in the middle of doing good. There, a bad person living a long life of sheer evil. So don't knock yourself out being good and don't go overboard being wise. It's like you find your center. Believe me, you won't get anything out of it. But don't press your luck by being bad either. And don't be reckless. Why die needlessly? Verse 18. It is best to stay in touch with both sides of the issue. There you go. A person who fears God deals responsibly with all reality, not just a piece of. Look at that. Take that down. See, you don't want to be too, too, you know. Too much of anything. So don't knock yourself out. You know, you know, and, and I'll talk about this later because I, I think what happens is we go from one extreme to the other. See, one version would say the, the person who fears God avoids all extremes. They look for the center. And here's the, here's the beautiful thing. And I think I said this uh, a couple of weeks ago. And that is not talked about the critic. And I talked about fear. And I said, you know, the feelings of fear, that's you. And when we, you know, we, we, we try to attack it and we try to suppress it, you're attacking yourself. You're suppressing something. And that, that, that is revealing to you something about yourself. Let, let, the, let the Holy Spirit use life to tell you the truth because you know what he's doing? He's pushing you to the middle because he don't want you to be too much anything. And sometimes when we, depending on who you're listening to, you go from a bad person, now you don't ran to the other extreme. And even that's a problem. 
Let's read it again. I want you to read this again. This is the message of Ecclesiastes 7, 7, Ecclesiastes 7, 15 through 18. Put up slide four again. I think it's worth reading twice. And this is the message, slide four. I've seen it all, says the teacher, in it all in my brief and pointless life. Here, come on now. We like here, a good person did this. It, it, just, just imagine how you feel, who, how, what your thoughts are like. It says here, a good person cut down in the middle of doing good. Then here's a bad person living a long life of sheer evil. See, to us, it's like what what kind of world is this? Is believe so, so? Listen, don't knock yourself out being good, and don't go overboard being wise. Believe me, you won't get anything out of stuff. You know, stop trying to be so right, you know, because you think that's what you need to do in order to get respect or for people to see you a certain way. It's just so, so twisted, right? Verse 17, don't, but don't, but don't press your luck by being bad and don't either, and don't be reckless. Why die needlessly? Here's this, what I love, this 18. It's best to stay in touch with both sides of an issue. It's best. That's why, that's why assumption isn't good because you don't get to know both sides of the story at times when you don't ask questions. And then you begin to behave like that reckless person or then trying to be good or trying to show how smart you are or trying to do something. Then it's because a person who fears God deals responsibly with all a reality, just not peace of it. Let's just stay out the seat all together. Say, God, we, I'm just looking for, I'm just, trust me. I, I, I want to find my center, right? Let's go to slide five. Remember, this ain't talk. These, we, 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 we're dealing with tools. We'll all need these things at some point. So now embracing my center. This is Proverbs 30, one through nine. The skeptic swore there is no God, no God. This is the message Bible. I can do anything I want. Just let's, let's treat this like, you know, just, 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 to both sides of an issue. Let's, let's say that, right? The skeptic swore, there is no God, no God. I can do anything I want. I am more animal than human. Right? He, she talk about herself. So-called human intelligence escapes me. I flunk wisdom. You ever turn it on yourself? He said, I see no evidence of a holy God. This is encouraging, this exhausted, staggering, anxious, panic streak, just in a place. Listen, I see no evidence of a holy God. Has anyone ever seen anyone climb into heaven and take charge, grab the winds and control them, gather the reins in his bucket, stake out the ends of the earth? Just tell me his name. Tell me the name of his sons. Come on now, tell me. Verse five, the believer replied, every promise of God proves true. He protects everyone who runs to him for help. So don't second guess him. He might take you to task and show up your life. And then he prayed. Now here's the believer reply. And then he prayed, God, here's, here's, here's embracing your sister. God, I'm asking for two things before I die. Don't refuse me. Banish lies from my lips. And lies from my presence. God, I know myself. I'm learning something about myself. This right here, I, I got to stay out of that space. I, I got to, I need to keep my space pure. Banish lies from my lips, not just others, and lies from liars from my presence. Give me enough food to live on. Neither too much nor too little. If I'm too full, full of myself, Right, I might get independent saying, God, who needs him? If I'm poor, I might steal and dishonor the name of God. Embrace my sin. Take it down. See, I have to desire not to be too much of any of these things. See, he said, listen, don't, don't, don't make me too, too rich. Now, that may not be your story. But this person understand, oh, you give me all that, I'm going to get caught up. I'm going to get caught up. I will start listening to something else. 
I, I get that. How? Why, why do I know that? Why does someone know that about themselves? Because you did it before in those smaller ways. Be before, before you made that big leap into, I done got caught up so much, now I'm off course. With this person saying, keep me on course, please. And the way to keep me on course is don't do this because I know myself. See, part of finding my center is knowing myself and being honest about myself and being responsible uh, a dealing with a person who, who fears God deals responsibly with all reality, not just a piece of it. So let me stop walking around like and just focusing on my good as if this other thing is not a part of me. And then let me not attack either one of them because both of them are part of me. You know, sometimes I, I, here, here's a thought that I had. When Jesus was, was praying three times, just because no one wrote this, that the devil was in his head saying, oh, you know, you ain't got to do this. Don't mean it didn't happen. It just means it didn't get written. See, we know that uh, what Satan say, I'm coming at a more, a more opportune time. What, what more opportune time would it, would it be when the event that had been talked about since the Old Testament is now here uh, a, a, a day, not even a whole 24 hour day away. So don't ever think that because what we read is Jesus' conversation with God, that there was not a uh, uh, another voice like the one in the wilderness. This is why, my opinion, you got to pass those smaller tests in dealing with that voice appropriately because the real deal is that this, this, this adversary, this spirit, this energy um, is really, really want to make a, 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 a big effect and really, really want you to have been weakened by not using your tools, by not knowing uh, knowing the true word of God, walking the true word of God in obedience to God, not all this stuff out here that, 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 that I hear, but that by this point, by the time you get to the place where some big things are about to happen and God is about to use you to free lots of people, you bail out. You, you bail out up under, listen to that voice. You should be here by now. No, you should. God, keep me. Embrace your embrace. It. Let me help find myself. I shouldn't be nowhere by now. I shouldn't be here, period, if it was up to me. Because clearly, clearly, I didn't have the will, the way, or the good sense to make some of the choices I end up making after I called out to God, surrender, and then God did what he did to people who surrender and, and choose, choose to follow the voice of the spirit and, 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 and try to get to love. Then embrace your sinner. Embrace your sinner. What is that thing? Remember it said in um uh slide two, get on your mark, don't put up. He said, let's throw off, off everything that hinders and the sin is so easily entangled. That's what he went to. Let me tell you what's going to entangle me. If if, if I get too much, this, this is this person's testimony. You got to know your own. You got to know your own stuff. He said, please don't. Because I already know me. That's why some folks who, you know, got got a got a got a, a, a serious lust spirit on them. Why are you why, why are you why, why why are you trying to help somebody uh uh some divorced person who got a heart broken? What you think you're doing? You better know yourself. Uh, you better know yourself. See, you, you know what the bishop parent told us this years ago. Don't, don't, do not um, counsel any woman. He said, he said this. He said, I don't counsel any woman in an office by myself. 
At this point, I don't even know if he, talk on the, he was talking on the phone with him by itself. But he understood. That's a dangerous space to be in. And he didn't say, oh, I got a love spirit. But he he was wise enough to know that things get things can turn some kind of way. You better have somebody else in that room. Now, you know, a long time ago, when we first started the ministry, all the brothers was walking like that. And if the brothers kept walking like that, there's a whole lot of adulteries or faith that would not have happened. There's a whole lot of flirting. There's a whole lot of almost getting there. There's a whole lot of stories that somebody don't want. Nobody don't ever want to come out. Can you bury my secret? They wouldn't even be there. Because when us, when us sisters used to come in, uh, we understood. Well, listen, that, that woman who was wiggling in front of you, she ain't going to wiggle in front of me. That woman who played play, play that damsel in distress, she already know um, there's another set of eyes right here. Spiritual eyes. And is. I'm listening. But see, you got to know. You got to know. But you know what happens? This world, we get, we get cocky. You know, we get, we get a certain way. And believe maybe we've done this, some, this, this thing so long that, that, that in our new space, we don't, we don't seek to find our center. Oh, this don't matter. I can. Hmm. Okay. How many, how many of y'all done got in trouble? Mm-hmm. Because you had a tool that will probably always be true. And the worst woman to help is one who has been rejected. It's the worst one to help. Unless you are a li licensed counselor and you sitting behind the desk away, and I still say, I mean, if you want to, better put a camera in there or something. Yeah. See, I got to understand do I know what it is to sin? How do I find my sin? Do, do, are my thoughts having me the extreme? How much do I know myself? How honest am I with myself? See, I, I said it all week. When I'm honest with myself about really what my what what I feel inside, like Jesus, I'm gonna have to go pray three times. Okay, Jill, I probably have to pray ten times. I'm gonna have to walk away. I'm gonna have to not talk about something when I'm triggered. Un until I'm until I recognize that I'm not in. I'm not in the trigger energy. But we think we've been doing this so long that we can move in that triggered energy and uh, 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 win the battle against that ancient serpent. That thing been around for a long time. You know what in the beginning means? Uh, before creation. So when you read in the beginning stuff, before, yeah, that was in the beginning, before all this. So mm -mm, that's a master, a master deceit. And would love for you to get caught up because you see somebody else on a mark and you think that's just a mark because, you know, you like what they got. You, you like they got a husband. You like they got a house. You like this, that, that. Mm -hmm. Is there some inside out change? I'm telling you, this is how you see. It's, it's fruit. Fruit. The evidence is fruit. The evidence is how we handle things under pressure. It ain't even fruit outside of pressure. It is in under pressure. What is our go-to? That's how you know. And that's how you know about yourself. Let's go to slide six. Let me get through this now. Oh, I didn't finish reading that scripture, did I? Go back to slide five. Let's read from six. So don't second guess him. He might take you to task and show up your lies. And then he prayed. I did read that. God, I'm asking two things before I die. Don't refuse me. Banish lies from my lips. Have you asked not to go off course? Have you prayed not to go off course? Do you care about not going off course? This person prayed, God, I'm asking you. Don't let this happen because I already know. First night, if I'm too full, I'm gonna get, I might get in the pit and say, God, who needs him? Come on now. I don't, I don't watch it all happen. I, I, I don't watch it. Where, 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 where things change. Why is that? Sometimes them blessings, sometimes them blessings will get you off course. If, if, if them blessings 
become uh, uh, if the if the promise become more important than the, the the promise giver and the promise keeper, the gift is more important than the gift giver, and what he he she what, what God has to say. All right, there we go. Slide six. Becoming centered, finding peace within chaos. That's how you become centered. You find peace within chaos. Right while you unpressure under the pressure. Panic stricken, uh, all of those things that was in Isaiah, staggering knees, feeling exhausted, anxious, panic stricken, be strong or fear not, he said. But, how, but, but, but what do you have to do so that you won't keep being here in this panic stricken space over, okay, I'm gonna say it this way, tripping over the same rock for the same reason. Or tripping over a different rock, but uh, uh, the same, the same sickness. This is what shalom means. Just read the part at the bottom, because that's that's the Hebrew word. It means to destroy the authority attached to the chaos. How do I get myself to the center? Take that down. What did this person do, in my opinion, in in Proverbs thirty? They went after the chaos. They went after the authority that 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 was causing the chaos. They went after that. That that uh, after that authority, have you put it back up? Read it again. Let me slide this again. To destroy the authority attached to the chaos, you in a chaos, you in confusion. Ask yourself, where is the power coming from? What's the authority? What's the power? What's what's really got a hold on me? Because. What am I allowing to move me? See, how do I find peace within this chaos? How do I do that? How do I find shalom? I have to first, which I believe happened in Proverbs 30, I have to first be honest about the authority attached to chaos. There, there's something, some thought, there's something there that got away from you. This is how you become centered. You now have to ask, well, what am I allowing to have power over me? Take that down. What is that? Last but not least, slide seven. Let's talk about some centering tools. What has power over me? What, what is causing, what do I need to do mm -hmm, so that I won't be at an extreme? So let's read the first bullet. When I am in limbo, and questioning my worth, ability, and or intelligence, I will stop judging myself harshly and remember that I am trusting God's divine intervention in making me fit. Look at verse 12, that, uh, look at that, the, the bullet underneath. We pray that you will be continually strengthened with all the power that comes from his glorious might so that you will be able to persevere, persevere, you can stay on the course and be patient in any situation, joyfully giving thanks to the Father for having made you fit. God, when I am in limbo, questioning my worth, ability, and or intelligence, you know, they 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 try to make me feel stupid. They might try to make you feel stupid. I, that, those are your words. Unless they can't say say to you, uh, I think you're stupid, then ask yourself why did you why did you choose those words? Or why do we choose whatever we say somebody trying to make us feel? That's a trigger. When I am in limbo and questioning my worth, my ability, or my intelligence, I will stop judging myself harshly and remember that I am trusting God's divine intervention in making me fit. What do I mean by that? I'm not gonna go on either extreme. If someone comes and I feel feel bad or the badness feeling of, of not worthy or inability or not intelligence, I am not going to run to the other extreme because either way you're judging yourself. Now I'm, trying, now I'm trying to be the good child. So now I'm at the other extreme. I will not judge myself harshly and I'll just remember that God, you're divine, you're making me fit. So I got this trigger. I don't like this. I don't think this way about myself. Um, I'm questioning my worth, I'm questioning my ability, I'm questioning my intelligence, and I'm I'm sending bad energy to people because I'm in this bad space. Guess what? Let me stop judging myself. Let me just back up off of this, right? It, listen, it says, 
giving thanks, verse 12, to the Father for having made you fit to share in the inheritance of his people in the light. He has rescued us from the domain of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his dear son. Father, my account is empty. I don't feel this. I think I don't have that. I don't have this. But guess what? I am going to accept your, tra your, your transfers. And even though I can't see it, I believe it. I believe that my account is full because you transferred from your account to mine. I know I'm broke. I know I don't have it. I know I'm out of sorts. I don't feel centered. Uh, 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 uh. My thoughts aren't going to extremes. If somebody say a bad opinion about me, then I'm going to try to show everybody how good I am. God, I, I surrender all of that. Bullet two. When I fall, here's your centering tools. When I fall into old habits and begin to think and move in extremes, I will show myself compassion and get back to the good I want to do. When my old habits come up, I will not let that be the tell me that I was not sincere when I cried out to God. I, I, God, I don't want to be stuck on stupid because of how I view things. What that bullet say? I do not understand what I do for what I do for what I want to do, I do not do, but what I hate, I do. And if I do what I do not want to do, I agree that the law is good as it is. It is no longer I myself who do it, but it is sin living in me. Okay, God, I haven't settled something. That's all. That's all. I'm surrendering to you. You reveal to me what I have I have not settled. I'm 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 gonna say I, I haven't settled this yet. And I still think that's just the way I am. I always been that way. No, yes, you have always been that way, but you're a new creature now. And if that thing is entangling you, and if that thing is a hindrance, don't hold on to, to the good of it or the bad of it. Just let it go. And if, if, if life should bring it back to you in a, a way that is not um, uh, uh, surrounded by sickness, how to lose. But don't you try to do it. You weren't good at making yourself fit. You already tried that. You judged so hard to ran from one stream to the other. Here we go. He says this, for what I do, mm -mm, 18, I know nothing good lives in me that is in my sinful nature for I have the desire to do what is good, but I cannot carry it out right there. When I fall into my old habits and move in the stream, I will show myself compassion and get back to the good I want to do. I will remind myself I had the desire to do good. I got caught up. Okay. I sat back. My reflexes went out there. But I'm going to show you, Jill, for yourself. Do better the next time. Don't say, I can't. There it is. I can't. No. Tell yourself, do better the next time. You know what that means? God, I look forward to you giving me the, giving me the chance to do, do this one over. Because I'm, I'm going to prove to you that I that 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 I have the desire to do good. I just couldn't carry it out on that. But I do have the desire. So show yourself some compassion. Get your behind back to the good, to the good you wanted to do. Otherwise, you're going to run to get these ways, this, this, this escape, just like people who are food addiction or a uh, drug addiction or some kind of addiction, some, some kind of thing to try to make yourself feel good. Just show yourself some compassion, get back, get back on the course, right? Third bullet. When I don't see the progress I want and begin to measure myself using the old mindset technique, like keeping records of my wrongs and the wrongs of others, I will accept the fresh start that comes with this new beginning and the new rules. What, do, what is our tool from the spirit? So from now on, we regard <coughs> no one from a human point of view, not even ourselves, according to the worldly standards and values. Though we have known Christ from a point, a human point of view, no, now we no longer know him in this way. Therefore, if anyone is in, you know, if anyone Therefore, if anyone is in or united with Christ, he is a new creature. 
So you gotta know, you gotta believe that about you before you can say that, you know, some people, they mean well, they just stuck in a cycle. I ain't saying you got to build a bell them out, but I'm saying, you know, they get to do better the next time, hopefully. Mm -mm. He is a new creature. Be born and renewed by the Holy Spirit. Do you believe that? The old things have passed away. Behold, new things have come because spiritual awakening bring a new life. God, I received this experience, spiritual awakening. I know I've been spiritually awakened. I have desires to do good at one point when I didn't even have the desire to do it. And I may not be carrying out, but if don't nobody else know, I have the desire to do good. I will do better the next time, Father. Sometimes you can tell the person, I'm going to do better the next time. Humble yourself, but listen, allow these things to center you so that you can stay away from those extremes. Because if we don't, we judge ourselves. I'm bad, so now I'm going to try to be good. Ain't nobody good but God. Uh, I've been too good. I've, I'm always the one who... um. Got to say to, to apologize. I'm 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 the one that has to do all the heavy lifting. I'm the one that have to do. Guess what? So what you gonna do? So now you're gonna become like the person you don't like. You stay out of it. God, what must I do today? How do I center myself? How has this situation right here triggered me? Why am I angry? What am I frustrated about? Um what all my thoughts at an extreme. Um, God, I, I feel like I'm out of sorts. What should I do? Separate yourself and go pray. You want to pray in the bathroom on the toilet? Go right ahead. You want to go sit in the car in a minute? Go right ahead. Separate yourself from other human beings who don't know that you go, you're going through all of that on the outside and, and, and going to say something like a human being and before you know it. Right? The thing that you didn't want to do is the thing that you did. Even though you have a desire to love whoever you're trying to love, you have a desire to, 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 to grow in these places. So, don't measure yourself. Don't let your old habits get you down. They're just the habits. The habits. And remember this. You are trusting God's divine intervention in making you fit. Not too much trying. Let's do a lot of trusting. Less trying and more trusting. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for leading us to the path of righteousness for your name's sake. We thank you, Father God, for giving us hope and giving us nourishment and nutrients to remain on this race. We thank you, Father God, for Restoring us when we're feeling exhausted. Comforting us, Father God, when we're panic-stricken. And reminding us, Father God, that you have us. And we don't have to worry. We can be strong and fear not. We thank you, Father God, for leaving those words for us in such a time as this. In Jesus' name, hallelujah, amen, 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 amen.